guys, welcome back to Bellavet, and today we are going to be talking about the NAVLI, also known as the National American Veterinary Licensing Exam, also known as our board's exam. Um, and it is tough, and yeah, there's just a lot that goes into it and studying for it, and uh, this is kind of what I wish I could have watched before my NAVLI, so let's get started. And uh, if you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe and also stay tuned until the end of this video. And I've got a really amazing giveaway partnered with Vet Prep for you guys. And we are giving away a lot of really cool stuff. And again, I wish I had this before I started um, studying for the NAVLI because Taking the NAVLI is expensive and studying for it is expensive and uh, this giveaway can really help you guys out quite a bit with that. So I'm so excited to be partnering with them on this and yeah. Okay, so my first tip is just to relax and I know that's super hard to do but take a big breath. Uh, no matter what happens, it's not the end of the world. You will be okay and just know that. And let me be the first to tell you, this is just a hoop you have to jump through. No one actually cares how you do on it. No one goes around telling each other their scores, um, unless it's out of like weird curiosity. Um, and I do not know of a single veterinarian who would ever judge someone based on them having to retake it. Like it is really not something that is a predictor of how good of a doctor you will be. It is just an obstacle that you have to overcome and get through and you just have to pass. And one of my favorite relaxation tips that a professor gave to me is he was like, look, you guys have been studying for this thing for the past three to four years. Like if you have been paying attention, if you've been getting okay grades, if you've been passing most of your classes, you're at a really, really good starting point. That does not mean that you, that it gives you a pass not to study, <laughs> but um, you know, you've already put in so much work to this, you know more than you think you do, and now you just have to bring it to the front of your head. Like, it's already in there. You just have to, you know, polish it up a little bit. Okay, so tip two is telling you guys about the format of the test. It is a computer-based multiple choice test. Uh, there are 360 questions broken down into six sections and uh, 60 of those questions, so one hour of your test, um, it doesn't count <laughs> towards your score. They are just uh, sample questions, kind of trial questions, if you will, for the next cycle. Okay, so my third tip is how to prepare, and this is one of the biggest tips that I have. I highly recommend using a, a preparation website like Vet Prep or Zuku, and uh, for me, I just liked the way Vet Prep kind of looked and felt a little bit better. Um, they are a bigger company, Zuku is a bit of a smaller company, but I know people who used, um, you know, one or the other, and I know people who passed using one or the other. So I think they're both good i just went with what i was a bit more comfortable with and i'll put the prices up on the screen now um to compare vet prep and zuku and there's like different subscription options depending on what you want um and also watch out for sales because they do go on sale about the time that everybody should start studying so um keep an eye out for that also something that you should know which was um one of the reasons that I chose vet prep is that if uh, you complete 80% of the practice questions, um, you get this thing called a pile of done where you can go back through them, which is really nice if you get the premium subscription. And also if you get to that 80% mark and you don't pass, then they just extend your subscription for free, which is really nice. And it's just one thing you don't have to worry about if you don't pass. It's one less thing on your plate. Okay, for vet prep, I recommend getting the premium subscription. It's what I got. Um, I, the difference is um, you get the pile done. You also get uh, to use lectures and power pages. And there's just some more supplemental materials that you get using the um, prime, the premium subscription. <laughs> and I also just didn't really feel like taking a lot of chances. I was like, you know what? It's more expensive, but I'm just going to go for it. It's on sale. So it's less expensive than it normally is. And, um, I was like, if I don't pass, I don't want that to be a factor. I just want to go for it. 
Um, but I also know a lot of people who did not get the premium subscription and they passed. And so I, I don't think it is a, you know, deciding factor. I think it was just what I was more comfortable with. So I went with it. I also recommend uh, starting to study and to get your subscription about six months ahead of time. So uh, if you're taking it November, December, I recommend um, getting your subscription in June or July. And yeah, that's what I did and I was really happy with it. Okay, getting into a bit more of the nitty gritty things. On vet prep, uh, you have a little bar that has like your percentage points. And what that means is you have this huge pool of practice questions and if you get 50 of them correct then you move one percentage point so it can be really frustrating if you're really tired and you keep getting them wrong and you take like 200 questions just to get 50 correct because yeah that happened to me once or twice but um uh, but yeah, so that's how the percentage points work and it really is it's a good driving force for wanting to get stuff done um, the only thing I would caution people on is it, It's so tempting to just start off with the practice questions because you're like you got to get my percent up That's kind of like how you're self grading yourself um, or like how you're pacing yourself, but and I was even guilty of this I went straight for the practice questions and I think I would have had a much better study time if I had looked at the supplemental materials. So either my class notes or um, the lectures and the power pages on vet prep. I like I would really, really highly suggest you look at those first and then move on to practice questions. Um, just so that you have a basis to answer the questions off of because I think it can be really easy to get wrapped up and start answering questions and if you get them wrong you see them again and so it can be tough of like okay well did I know this or did I just see the question enough times and remembered the answer and that's why I got to get past that question and so um, and a big part of it is if you do that preparatory studying for the first like month or so then you will get through those questions so much faster when I first started answering them I would have to go through so many questions just to get 50 right and to get one percentage point. And so I would just say like you will move faster through that and you will feel more productive if you have a base for your studying to go off of. So that's something that I wish I had done differently. Um, but yeah. Another big thing is, you know, you're in your clinical year most likely. You will have rotations that are just too demanding to get done as much vet prep as you want to get done. And I would say it's gonna happen to everyone. It's kind of inevitable. And just forgive yourself. Like it is going to happen and it can be tough, but um, I'll talk about this a little bit later on, but the stuff that you're learning in clinics, especially if you're at your hospital, is stuff that's gonna be on boards. Like you are still studying, even if your little percentage isn't you know, going up. So uh, forgive yourself, and if you do have a more relaxed rotation coming up, maybe try to think about like doubling down or you know working extra hard during that rotation. Also, I would say check out the vet prep calendars. I believe these are available for both the regular and premium subscriptions. Um, and there's a three month and a six month calendar. And um, they really helped me kind of set a pace at the beginning, at least until I realized like what parts of vet prep really worked for me and what parts I didn't use as much and um, they just gave me a really good starting place and so I started with the six month one obviously I had some tough rotations I got behind I forgave myself and um, eventually I got so far off track that I was like you know what when the three month you know time comes around I'm just gonna start with that one again and then about one or two months out, I really honed in on what worked for me and what didn't, and then I just kind of focused on that. So, um, so yeah, I would say at least check them out. Okay, so tip four is uh, I'm gonna talk about my schedule. Um, and this is what worked for me. It might not work for you. It might be too fast or too slow, but this is what just worked for me and my study habits. And like I said earlier, there are certain rotations that are just too demanding. And for me, pathology was one of those rotations. It was a rotation that a lot of people are like, take it before boards, it's super helpful for boards. And so when I was on that rotation, it was just a lot of time in the necropsy lab. And then you weren't, when you weren't in the necropsy lab, it was a lot of time, there's just a bunch of tests for the rotation. And, um, 
and it really was a good boards prep and so I like I said earlier I forgave myself for not doing a lot of vet prep because I still felt like I was studying for boards. I was still learning a ton about diseases and toxicology and a lot of things that were super relevant for boards. And so I was like, you know what? It My percentage isn't going up, which just kind of stings a little bit, but I still feel like I'm studying for boards. So I'm just gonna try to do really well on the test for my rotation and you know, call that good. And about five months out, I was on my equine rotation in my hospital and for that, um, it was still really demanding rotation, so I didn't get as much vet prep done as I wanted to, but with that one, um, I, I really did start to focus on vet prep more than just my clinical studies. And on that rotation, I, you know, I really did focus too much on getting my percentage up and answering uh, practice questions probably sooner than I was ready to. I hadn't done enough studying yet and so it took forever and I was really slow getting through them and you know I, I was worried that like what if I'm not doing enough. Um, so it's not that I wasn't doing enough, I just wish I had done things differently. And that is the only constructive criticism I have for vet prep. I think it would be cool if there was a way, and I know with the algorithm, like maybe it's really difficult to do this, but I think it'd be really cool if there was a way that like every time you opened a lecture and watched it all the way through or read a power page and hit complete or something, like I wish that would do a little something for your percentage point because I think that would give a lot more people incentive to study materials first and then start answering questions. So. Um, that is the only thing I wish. I don't know if it's possible or if it's practical, but um, but yeah, that's the only thing I wish was differently. Other than that, vet prep was a really amazing study tool uh, to have. I also did my first timed exam during this rotation, and I was really nervous to do it, and I got a pretty bad grade on my first one. I think I did like 60 questions or something, and um, I think I got like a 50%, and just know that like, that's okay. That's where I was five months out and it hurt and it stung because I was like, if I got this on a test in the clinic, like it would not be good. Um, but you are still learning. You're still studying. It's fine. Um, that's where I was at and I still passed. So don't worry about it, but definitely use it as a force to keep studying and keep studying hard. About three to four months out, uh, that's about the time that I felt like I had a pretty good base. And so that's the time that I started really doubling down on the vet prep practice questions. Um, and on the days when I had a really long day and I was too tired, uh, I would study the power pages or just put a lecture on and kind of listen to it um, in the background uh, instead. So another reason why I really like the subscription I got. And two months out, I really started focusing on the uh, timed exams, and um, I also took my first NAVLI practice exam. So when I say timed exam, I meant timed exam through vet prep, and the NAVLI practice exams are something else. They're by the ICBA, which is the governing body uh, that gives out the NAVLI, um, and so they are real NABLI practice questions. I think they're ones that were used years ago and are now retired. And so um, there are four practice exams you can take. They all cost 50 bucks a pop, which is quite a bit. They do take about four hours to complete, or at least they did for me because I'm a very thorough test taker. I do not zoom through tests. I like reread everything four times. Um, so I used all the time allotted and it took me about four hours. I would say they're about two thirds of a real full length NAVLI. Um, and it at the end, it gives you a score range. It does not allow you to see the correct answers or the wrong answers. It does not allow you to see which ones you got right or wrong. It does not allow you to go back and look at any of the questions. So just know that that's what you're getting into when you're spending $50. At the end of the thing, the only thing you get is a score range. And the first one I took was they're labeled like test one, two, three, and four. I took test one and it gave me a, it gave me a score range that when I took the real NAVLI, that my score was within that range. So for me, that was the most accurate test that I took. And a little tip that I would give you is once you're done and right before you hit submit or right before you see your score, just like take in how you feel because when I took mine, I was like, I feel terrible. I feel like I just bombed that. Like I doubt I passed it. I'm gonna have to, like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my studying. Like it's clearly not working. Like I 
really felt really bad about how I did and then my range was passing. So just know that, just like sit with it for a second. It's gonna be uncomfortable, but just know that when you take it, everyone who has ever passed the Napoli that I've spoken to felt like they failed it when they walked out of the room. So just know that that's how, unfortunately, you're gonna feel most likely. Um, and just prepare yourself for that or just think about it for a little bit and then look at your score and then be excited and happy and relieved um but yeah that's that's a it's not a fun tip but it's it's a good tip that i wish i would have had <laughs> okay and one month out i took my second navli practice exam i was still doing practice questions and power pages and stuff um but i took exam number three and at least for me um you know it had been about a month since i took the last one so i was like okay i've done quite a bit of studying like, let's see how it how it went and uh, I took it and I felt a little bit better before I hit submit than the first one. Um, and my score was like considerably higher. Um, and it was actually higher than my actual score, the range was. So that one, I would say, if anything, it was a little bit easier, in my opinion, than the real Napoli. Um, and so I just felt like taking that exam, while it still was legitimate Napoli questions, I felt like the test number one prepared me better than test number three. If you are having to choose which one to spend your money on, I would say number one was, for me at least, more accurate than number three, so. Also something to keep in mind is when I took the real Navli, and I'll talk about this a little bit later on too, uh, it was way more wordy than I was expecting. Even after I had taken two Navli branded practice exams, I, my timing was off. I didn't have enough time. I wish I had like 10 minutes more on every section. And so um, I would say when you're taking, if you decide to take the NAVLI practice exams, um, I would say really focus on your timing and maybe try to pace yourself even faster than you think you need. So tip five is taking the test. And I'm pretty sure I filmed a little clip um, the night before I took it. So I'll insert that in now. Hey guys, so today I take the North American Veterinary Licensing Examination, also known as the NAVLI, and uh, yeah, I'm a little nervous, but I'm trying to think of it as just taking a couple practice tests back to back so I don't get too nervous about it. Um, but I did the tutorial this morning, which allows you, it's just so you don't have to do it on the exam. Um, yeah, we're about to go to Starbucks. And then to the testing center, um, my test is at 9, and uh, yeah, so I'll let you guys know how I feel after, maybe. Okay, a big tip I have, um, which is a hard one even for me, is try to get a good night's rest before uh, your test. And if that means exercising during the day so that you're tired at night, like every time I do yoga like a full yoga session i sleep like a baby um a tip i have i've heard exercising before you go to bed it's not great because it wakes you up more than it um, tires you out so um yeah and also maybe try reading a book maybe a boring book that puts you to sleep and also check out the song weightless i believe it's by Merrick Pony Union. Um, it is just a really cool song that has been clinically shown to reduce anxiety and help with sleep. So, but just as you know, an extra little help to get you to sleep. And this one's embarrassing. Uh, also, uh, as you know, this test is a marathon, not a sprint, so bring snacks. Additionally, make sure you have a pocket because every time you leave the exam room, you need uh, your little key for your locker and you need your ID card. And I had been putting my ID card in my pant uh, waistband because I was wearing leggings um, and then I need to use the bathroom. So I put it in my sports bra and then I forgot that I had done that um, and I looked in my waistband and it wasn't there and I had like all of the blood rush from my face, cold sweat set in and I looked in the bathroom thinking I flushed it and I just <laughs> had a very, very quick, very intense mini panic attack and I was like, oh my gosh, they've seen me come in and out of that room, like they know it's me but they, they're required to look at my ID every time 
and I'm gonna I'm halfway through the test I'm gonna have to retake it like they they must think I'm such an idiot for flushing my ID and then I went like this and I felt it and I just had the biggest sigh of relief and I had only I, I had wanted to only take a five minute break but I took a 10 minute break so I was like I just need to recoup and for my blood pressure to go down <laughs> and yeah so have a pocket um and and that'll save you from a heart attack like i had so um pro tip speaking of break time you have 40 minutes of break time uh i chose to use it for like five to ten minute breaks between each section a lot of them are closer to five than ten um and yeah i got up in between almost every section and i left the room and i just needed a minute to mentally regroup, to stretch my legs, and I was really happy that that worked for me. But some people like to just power through, get it done early. Um, other people like to take one long break in the middle and eat. Um, so yeah, just do what works for you, but you've got about 40 minutes. And like I alluded to earlier, I did not expect this test to be as wordy as it was. So I just thought that the real deal was much more wordy than the practice test. I felt like that was the one thing that they, that they didn't prepare me well for. Um, so I would just really focus on keeping yourself on pace if that is something like me that you struggle with. I'm always a person who rereads things multiple times before I hit submit and with this I just didn't have time for that. That was not something that I could have done. Um, and I really wish I had five to ten more minutes per section. That was all I would have needed to feel comfortable. But well, I had like three minutes left and five questions to go and I was like, I can't do this. So I uh, would mark every question, answer every question, no matter what happens. <laughs> and, uh, and then I would go back knowing, okay, at least they're all filled in. Now I can take my time and get through as many as I can before it submits. So um, yeah, just watch out for that. So, once you hit submit for the entire test, uh, yeah, you're done and you deserve to celebrate. Also, you will feel terrible, most likely. I didn't talk to a single one of my classmates who was like, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Like, all of them felt like they failed it. Um, and all of them that I talked to had passed. So just know that how you feel after the test is not an indication of how you did. And that's one of the reasons why earlier when we were talking about practice tests, why I said before you hit submit or right after you hit submit and before you look at your score, definitely just like sit there and feel how uncomfortable it feels and how like tough it feels because that's how you're gonna feel after the test. And then when you look at your score and you see most likely that you passed, you know, then you'll be like, okay, that feeling goes with that score. Because I passed, I was like dead center on the bell curve, did not do above, below average, I was just like right in the middle, and I was sure I failed it. Um, I even texted a bunch of the vets and I was like, I feel terrible. Um, I was also so, my brain was mush, and um, <laughs> I had, I my testing center was three hours away, and I was like, mom, I'm totally gonna help, because my mom helped get me there um and i was like i'm totally gonna help you drive back and she took one look at me and she was like you are not driving not you look terrible just like just, nope we're gonna just go and uh, get it, get you a glass of wine so that's good you deserve to celebrate no matter what happens you did the thing you did an extremely difficult seven hour test just assume that you passed and just go celebrate because you deserve it and yeah and just know that this is an extremely difficult but also extremely curved test and i even tried to look up exactly how it's graded um and i'll try to find it and post it for you guys either here or in the description um but it was a lot of statistical gibberish that i didn't understand um not straightforward so how i felt taking it i felt like it was really really hard but also really, really curved. Um, so most people pass. There are some every year that need a second attempt and that's completely okay too. Tip seven, uh, getting your results. After the test, you will have a period, depending on when you took your test in your cycle, of three to eight weeks uh, that you don't know your score, which um, I took mine in early December. Uh, I think we got our results on January 22nd or sometime around then. Um, and yeah, it sucked having to wait that long. Um, that's one thing that I'm like, 
why why does it need to take so long to get results um but yeah and it's also over the holidays so you're spending you know the winter holidays and new year's not knowing if you passed your boards exam and it just it just sucks so if you ever need to rant about that to me like message me on instagram or comment down below like it's like i will i will hear you out on that rant i was so frustrated with it and the release date typically is around the time that it was released the year before for your cycle uh for us it was a week late so you had every vet student <laughs> every fourth year vet student who took it uh in the country just like freaking out for a week so that was fun um but you'll get an email and it'll send you to a portal some people in my class shared the portal link from last year it's the same link um and so people would just refresh the portal so they wouldn't have to wait for their email. Um, for me, the portal, I got my results like a half hour before I got my email. So they were just kind of sitting in there. So um, if you really want them ASAP, maybe that's a good idea. Um, but yeah, they don't tell you the exact date that it comes out on. It's kind of just a wait and see situation. And once you get your email, you'll have an ID number, you'll plug that into the portal and you'll get a PDF and it will tell you whether or not you passed. And here's me getting my results. Okay. Because now I know what the balance is. Hey, Mom. Mm -hmm. Just to QuickBooks, I have to make sure all the outstanding. Um, <laughs> um, my daughter just passed her board. She's telling me <laughs> for vet school. <laughs> Yay! Um, congratulations to my smart, <laughs> amazing, wonderful daughter who just passed her boards. Yay! <laughs> I'm so excited for you, Rachel. <laughs> I love you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you excited, Izzy? You say for your mommy's gonna get an actual job now. Is a good girl. Hi, sweetie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Grand dog here. <laughs> now, be sure to go celebrate. You deserve it. You deserve two celebrations when you take it, when you pass it. This is your time to shine. Um, yeah, just do not feel bad about celebrating. Just go for it. Um, but do also, you know, be considerate to people who don't pass um, in whatever celebrations you do do. Um, it happens every year and uh yeah just just try your best to celebrate in the way that you need in the way that you deserve um and also try to just be considerate to those who do need a second attempt and if you don't pass just know that it's okay and that you will pass the next time you take it or the time after a lot of states give you five chances to take it which um, is awesome and uh, yeah, but I do not know of a single veterinarian who would judge somebody on not passing. I know some of my favorite veterinarians, some of the most successful veterinarians that I know, like not even joking, I, I don't wanna say who they are because they shared it you know, with my class um, and I'm not sure how comfortable they are sharing it publicly, but they're some of the most successful veterinarians I have met, like way up there. And um, and they didn't pass their Napoli on the first try, or there's another one who is a specialist and she didn't pass her specialty boards on the first try. And like, that's okay. It does not, it is no indicator of how good of a veterinarian you are going to be. It is just a hoop. It's an obstacle that you just gotta get through and everybody will be cheering you on when you get to the other side. And 
uh, a dear friend of mine needed a second attempt to pass it. Some of you may know her as Dr. Christy. She recently made a YouTube channel, which I am so excited about. Um, and she, on that channel, she talked a lot about her experience um, not passing. And I believe there's two videos, or there will be two videos, um, where on one she talks about getting the results of her first test and what she thinks she could have done better. And then um, the second one will be more like the right way to study and the ways that she found that helped her pass on her second try. So um, for that perspective, go over there. Uh, she did an amazing job. She's so well spoken. Um, so definitely go check that out. And she's also helping me out with this giveaway. We are partnering with Vet Prep and um, I just am so excited. They have been so generous with this. They are giving away um, a premium subscription, a standard subscription, these really cute plush animals that support the World Wildlife Foundation. And they're also giving out some t-shirts and some bandanas that say best study buddy for your pups. Um, so yeah, just sort of a bunch of cool stuff. I'll put the rules below and you can also find them on Instagram. Okay, and that is the video for today. Um, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the little bell notification icon so that you're always notified when I upload a video. And I can't wait to see you guys again next time.